Hey guys, what's up? I'm Justin from Lee Baseball Blogs, and guys, I'm here with Tim from the Cash Kelly and AC Sports Report. And guys, we're gonna do our wrap up. We haven't done the wrap up in quite a while now, so we're gonna like we did before or the past two times we did this is we're gonna give you go through the standings and we're gonna predict on how well the future of the games remaining on their schedule for any other team will go. So guys, let's bring in Tim. Tim, what's going on, man? Nothing, just enjoying baseball season, watching some NBA playoffs. It's a good time, no school. Happy to be not at school. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so far, well, I also have to say thank you to you guys who've been subscribing to us. 100 subscribers, one more until we're at our 100th mark. I'm really excited. So let's kick it off like we do always in the AL East. New York Yankees in first place, a 17 and 12 record. Rich, uh, Tim, what is, how is the Yankees pulling this off? Everybody's saying that Boston's going to be in first place, but they're in fourth place right now. How are the Yankees pulling this out? Basically, my, my complete thoughts on how the Yankees are pulling this out right now, besides Derek Jeter, the offense is doing well. Uh, if you look at it, Tampa Bay is the only other team in that division with a winning record. So the division hasn't been tough. The schedule necessarily hasn't been too tough. I mean, the Yankees are a great team, or a good team, uh, but they've lost three in a row. I still think the Red Sox win this division. I think the Yankees win the wild card. If you look, the Red Sox are creeping up. Yeah. Um, the Yankees, I think it was a couple days ago. I think, yeah, it was yesterday that Jeter got benched. Um, this this team's going through injuries right now. This is where the older guys come into play, and their injuries are just taking the best of them. Um, Eric Chavez will be out three to four weeks. I've been it was reported that he broke a bone while running the bases against the Detroit Tigers. He's going to be out. He's just been phenomenal for the Yankees ever since arriving there. Um, Phil Hughes, uh, I think he's still injured. I think he's going to make some uh, minor league starts before getting the call back up um, from his injuries. So right now the Yankees. Injury wise, they're a big, big heavy toll for them. But other than wise, they're going to be great. A Rod is playing decent. Robinson Cano is playing decent. I mean, other than that, it's all good. Next off, we have our good friend Richard Jamberin's Tampa Bay Rays. This Rays team is having a great bounce back so far. Tim, what is the big turnaround for this Rays team? Uh, looking at the Rays again, in this division, it hasn't been a great division. They're getting solid pitching. They are guys stepping up like Sam Fold. So I think if you look at the Rays, I think they'll fade, and I still could see them in last place. But, I mean, it's been a nice start for them, for sure. After starting a little slower, they've rebounded. Yeah, they've definitely rebounded. Evan Longori being the, getting the uh, getting picked off from the DL. Um, is now back in the uh, lineup again. Felipe Lopez sent down the assignment. Was the sending down Felipe Lopez a mistake by the Rays? Because he actually did kind of decent. Do you think the Rays should have sent down somebody else? No, I don't think that was a mistake. I, I actually believe that was the right move. All right. Next, we have the Baltimore Orioles. I mean, this team started off really hot at the beginning, and now they're just slumping and slumping and slumping right now. 14 and 16 right now. Tim, what has been the downfall so far for this team right now? Uh, it's been the fact that they just do not have the pitching there. It's as simple as that. They don't have the starting pitching. They don't have the relief. And the lineup is good. But, I mean, if you look at it, there it's somewhat overrated. I mean, Vlad Guerrero is old. Derek Lee, I don't think, has a ton left. I mean, Mark Reynolds, I like a lot, but he strikes out too much. And if he's not hitting a home run, well, other than that, he's not really doing much. So, I mean, their offense is not good enough to carry them, especially alone, especially in this division. Yeah, their pitching is just bringing them down a lot. I mean, like you said, they have the hit. I mean, their hitting is terrific. Mark Cake is Vladimir Guerrero, Derek Lee. You got um, Mark Reynolds. I mean, who else? I mean, that's just that's pretty much it. I just named, like, five all-stars right there. And I don't know what's going on. It's probably the pitch. I mean, Buck Walter has been a great manager coming in from last year at midseason up to now. I think that the Orioles will finish maybe in third place this season as the standings are looking off. Uh, but, as again, it's still kind of early in the season to predict on what's the finish right now. Next, we have the Boston Red Sox. Um, not a huge Red Sox fan. They Last night, they oh, yesterday, they got blown away by the LA Angels. 11 nothing. Uh, Tim, what is the deal with Boston? And they're, they're having somewhat of a bounce back right now. 
Get Boston being first yeah, place. Well, I mean, the, the, yeah, they have the talent to win. And the, the lineup to me is still one of the most scary lineups. Carl Crawford's finally coming around a little bit. Adrian Gonzalez, I still think, will win MVP. The pitching is coming around. They have a lot of guys who tend to start slower in that pitching staff. The question, and it looked like a strength early on in the season, is the bullpen. I mean, Jonathan Papelbon, I have to pull up his stats to see exactly what he's done because I don't want to misinform anyone. But what I do know is Dan Wheeler's been overworked and he hasn't been good, and he's going uh, to the disabled list now. So they, their bullpen has not looked necessarily great so far. Uh, they have some questions to figure out. There's no question. Uh I think the bottom line is the Red Sox have the potential, and maybe I overrated them a bit at the beginning of the year, to be the best team in baseball and to win the World Series. Absolutely. I mean, Boston, yeah, they have their... Everybody will... Let's just mark that out. Um, another question for you, Tim. I keep on hearing the same stupid ideas. Was Carl Crawford the right move for Boston, or should Boston go back to Victor Martinez? I'm sick and tired of people are saying... Oh, Carl Crawford's a bust. He should have uh, re-signed Victor Martinez. Tim, what is your output well, I mean, on that? When you sign these contracts, everyone looks great, and it's hard to imagine a guy like Crawford being a bust. It's possible, but I I don't see that happening. I, I'm looking at the fact that I think long-term Carl Crawford was the best move. Short-term, because he's a right-handed hitter and because he's right in the best part of his prime, Jason Worth is probably the best overall option. But no, I think long term, for that type of money, the best bet was to go with Carl Crawford. Alright. Um, so there you go. There's a little inside of the Boston Red Sox. A lot of controversy a little bit going around Boston. Next up, we're going to end the AL East. We got the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, Jose Batista, this guy has been hit by a lot of the outside balls. Tim... What is going on? What's what's what does Toronto need to do? They're fourteen and seventeen right now. They're tied for last place with Boston. What needs to be going on Toronto's way? Really, I think that uh, if you look at this, the bottom line is Toronto's got a lot of young pieces that they're trying to put around guys like Jose Batista, and it's just not their year yet. They're going to be an eighty, maybe even eighty-five win team, but they are not ready yet. <laughs> yeah. Um. Now we're going down to the to the Central. We're going down to the AL Central. We're going to talk about two teams in the mix right now. Let's talk about the teams who are really, really catching some people's eyes somewhat. I don't know about all you other baseball fans. But the Cleveland Indians, who are 21-9, and nine, and the Kansas City Royals, who have somewhat of a decent start off in second place, 17-14. and 14. Tim, tell us about these two franchises and what's their key to their success so far this season. I think the biggest key to their success is the fact that the teams we thought were going to have success haven't had them. The White Sox have been atrocious. Their bullpen is just awful. It is terrible. Uh, and, and I heard some interesting points that maybe it's time to go with Ozzy Ian, or it's time for him to go. I don't know. Uh, for the Indians, their pitching has been tremendous, and it shows with the fact that they have a 49, plus 49 run differential compared to the White Sox at the bottom of the division who have a minus 34. That goes into pitching and how many runs you score. Kansas City, they're in a shitty division, and this is normally a team that started off hot the last two seasons. Absolutely. Except the last year. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Melky Cabrera's pulling through somewhat. Jim Frank Corey is always that guy who are some batters are actually kind of are fearing a little bit right now. That guy has just been walk-off home runs, walk-off singles. I mean, that's what I've just been seeing a lot when I'm tuning into the Royals. So... Other than that, we have the two losing teams who are winning right now are pretty much in first and second place. Cleveland in first, Kansas City in second. Tim, let's change the story around to the teams who we thought were going to be in first place this year, or first place so far. Um, it was a big question on who's going to be in first place. Chicago, Minnesota, and Detroit. Tell me about these three teams. I think the Detroit is just a mediocre team. I felt that throughout the season. They added Victor Martinez, and that was a nice move, but they still don't have the pitching. And their lineup's good, but it's not amazing. It has a few amazing players like Miguel Cabrera, but it's not amazing. For the White Sox, everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. This team we've talked about the entire season does not have an ace. I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I felt that this could be a team that could actually make a run not only in the AL Central, but 
in the American League. Happy I didn't pick them to do that. Minnesota, their bullpen's not good enough. They're having problems with guys like uh, Morneau and Maurer staying healthy, so we'll have to see. Yeah, I have to agree with that. Um, like you said, we'll back to Chicago. I mean, this team just got no hit the other day by Fran- uh, Francisco Liriano. I mean, this team is going terrible so far. 11-21. and 21. They're 11 games back from first place, and I'm just like, that's atrocious right there. I have to agree with you that. So, let's make our way down to the AL West. We're going to do the LA Angels. Um, they're in first place, actually. I mean, um, Texas with the game back so far. Tim, everybody's saying that if if when Kendra Morales comes back to the DL, what player do you think will be being sent down once he gets off the DL? And I honestly don't follow the Angels enough to know that. I'm not going to lie about that part. All right. Um, so. I, I, yeah, I feel the bottom line is that uh, LA is making a run. Dan Heron's pitching great. They need Jeff Weaver to stay healthy, though. So they, they do, or Jared Weaver. They need to make sure that they don't push him back into this if he's not ready. Yeah. LA Angels, uh, being an LA Angels fan, man, I mean, this team's doing. Terrific. Jared Weaver playing fantastic baseball, picking up his first loss, sadly, against Boston. Um, the LA Angels just got to keep working. I mean, they're doing terrific. The favorite, when I, going back to the uh, Kendra Morales thing, um, the favorite to be sent down was Mark Trumbo. I mean, this guy was actually hitting a little bit like Kendra Morales once he was before his injury. Uh, but everybody's saying that Kendra Morales, he's going to be sent down. It's not going to be Hank Kronger because this team does not have a decent backup uh, catcher right now. Uh, Bobby Wilson's going to be good, but Hank Kronger is going to be the first baseman if Kendra Morales comes back. I could see Kendra hitting the DH for a little while. Um, on to the last three teams on our count of the AL. Then we'll do the NL in a different video, guys. Um, Texas at 17 and 15. Oakland at 16 and 16 at 500. Seattle, wow, I'm doing. They're three games back from first place. I mean, I usually think that maybe eight wins right now, nine wins right now, but they're really doing something right now. Sam, tell us about this this three way like extravaganza right now. Well, the, the Rangers are just kind of treading water, which is what they need to do. They're going to get Josh Hamilton back eventually, but getting the Tali Fulis back is huge. For Oakland, I mean, it's like we said all year, the pitching has come back down earth a little bit, but it's still stacked with guys like Brett Anderson, Gio Gonzalez, and Trevor Cahill. Uh, the thing is, they have a zero-run differential, and when you, when you have a lineup that is, or a pitching rotation that is that good, and you have that, it really shows that your offense sucks. For the Mariners... Uh, Felix Hernandez hasn't even pitched great, so it is pretty impressive that they're 15 and 17 right now. Yeah. So other than that, I think that the team I'm really gonna be like having high hopes for right now is going to be either the LA Angels. I mean, Texas Rangers. Don't get me down. I think Texas is gonna finish great this season. Everybody's saying they're gonna go back and be in first place. That is a great possibility. But so far this season, I think that Oakland's gonna be doing great so far. Seattle's hitting really nice with Brendan Ryan doing great. LA Angels, they're depending on their pitching ro- their pitching rotation. Texas, Tim, who are they depending on right now? They're depending on probably going out and getting a starting pitcher at the deadline because that's what they need the most, I think. Yeah. So there you go, guys. That is the outlook for the AL. Um, how well do you think the uh, every team in this division will do? You let us know. We'll talk to you guys later. And watch some NBA basketball. We got the Lakers, Mavericks coming up right after the Bulls and Hawks. Um, let us know, guys. We'll talk to you guys later.